when there is a strong immediate need and importance for focus, suddenly humans are able to gather their will instantly in that very moment. And all scattered thoughts about their perceived problems, which they took so seriously before that moment, which they gave so much credit and they were such a victim to, all that suddenly is ignored without any hesitation or inner struggle or battle. Suddenly we're master meditators because we perceive there's an importance to it. So when we keep complaining like, oh, I can't focus, I can't do this, it's nonsense. It's just, you give so much importance to all your tiny, tiny little problems that are not actual problems. And you give so much importance to trivial little things that absolutely have no influence on your state of being, except because you give it that power and you've gotten so used to it and everybody else is doing it. Because of that sloppy, cornflakes degree of consciousness that we have as a society, no offense, it's just the way it is. Um, we have forgotten to train ourselves in the importance of gathering our will. But when it matters, suddenly we're fucking Superman and Superwoman. So we got to see how full of ass we are when it comes to our own self-belief and how much we can focus. If we really want to, we would be. So there's a hypocrisy often in our thinking. It's just that we give so much importance to things that we know don't really matter, especially not compared to our overall health, well-being, spiritual advancement, and so forth. So, for example, when um, I used to free dive, people often think like, oh, well, wouldn't you be panicking? Well, that can happen. But for me, at least, and of course, I was already quite trained in consciousness at that time, so maybe it's a little bit easier for me or more, not easier, but more well-trained. But if you're going quite deep on a single breath, so there's no oxygen tanks involved in free diving, right? So you're going down and let's say you're at 30 meters or something like that. So you're 30 meters below the surface and um, uh, for, for Amer American metrics, it's, uh, it's close to 100 feet. So let's say you're at that depth and you know, and let's say something kind of goes wrong or you notice like, oh, maybe, you know, I'm not feeling so well actually in my dive or whatever it is. And you know in that moment that your best chance of getting back to the service without passing out before you get there is to be focused. To Actually, it's to ignore panic. All right, so now you have this perfect equation at 30 or 40 meters depths underneath the water surface. And you look up and you see this, you know, you see these tiny little humans that are swimming up there and something doesn't quite feel great. You don't feel at your best or you, you feel like, oh, you know, there's just so much contraction of like, <laughs> which happens during free diving. And for some reason you have a bit of an off day and it kind of throws you off and you, you start to, feel a panic come on. Oh shit, I have to go 40 meters up before I get there, but I already feel like I have to breathe right now. It's a fun sport, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, but only do it if you feel really inspired to do it. But then I've had those moments where that comes up and then there's this almost this physical nervous system response of panic, the instant mind survival metric. But then I knew in those moments well, okay, so I can get panicky, which is sloppy thinking, it's weak minded, it's fear based, it's about fearing for my survival and so forth, which you could say is logical and reasonable. But nevertheless, panic is thinking of myself as small. However you want to turn it panic is me believing I'm this small, tiny little human being that's a victim of its circumstances, even in that situation, I chose to be there, I chose to be at that depth, it's my decision. And I have faith in the universe. I have faith in myself. I did this. I signed up for this. I wanted to do this. So here I am. Get yourself together. Get a grip. So, but then also, even if your life is at stake, get a grip. And you can, with enough focus, you can withstand scary situations and be on point and be powerful and be focused and be Neo like, like in the Matrix. Because in those situations, and using the free diving as an anecdote or example, you know that your best chance of actually getting to the beneficial result of surviving in this case is to ignore the panic, 
because I know that if I start panicking and if I indulge those weak thoughts, those little person thoughts, if I indulge that temptation, it's very tempting, right? To start thinking about your death and panicking. But I know if I indulge those thoughts, my chances of getting to the surface are way less because it's going to burn much more oxygen. Very logical choice. So I have the choice between what's actually honorable and beneficial, which is ignore the panic, stay calm. Or it's to start panicking because it's like scratching a mosquito bite itch. Like, oh yeah, man, it's so itchy. I have to scratch it. Oh, it's, I'm so afraid. I have to panic. You really don't. You can harness your will. You are in charge of what you focus on. You are in charge of your free will. You and you alone. Not a single circumstance, not two seconds before imminent death. You and you alone determine your well-being. And there's nothing that should throw you off center, ultimately, ideally. Don't, you know, this is advanced, but we'll get there. You can get there. And it's also perceived benefit. You just know, I got to focus, which means I have to ignore all the panicky thoughts. Just ignore it. Just don't think. Boom. So this is the gathering instant will, instant concentration. And I'm using a somewhat extreme scenario to get the picture across. But you see, this can be done on dry land. This could be done being super comfortable and safe in your bed. It really is a matter of will. It's really a matter of conjuring this up by yourself, by seeing the perceived benefit and value and importance in what you choose to focus on every day. Abraham Hicks sometimes said, you guys are so sloppy in your thinking. Forgive us for saying this, but you're so sloppy in your thinking. If a brick would fall on your head every time you have a self-detrimental or negative thought, you would start paying attention. So picture that. Picture that every negative thought, every week, like, oh, poor little me, my finances, my this, my situation. Oh, every time you lack faith in the universe, in the creator, in your creation, in your infinite power, in your true self, every time you choose to indulge in that mosquito bite of lack beliefs. And it can be tempting because you can start feeling things, uh, remembering things, trauma can come up and so forth. But when it really matters, you have the ability to say no, even to all your cylinders, fear cylinders firing off at the same time. So again, if you can kind of get this, and if this can kind of be transmitted through this message in an extreme scenario, then for sure you're going to be able to apply this at a higher level now that we've talked about this, now that this has been conveyed and transmitted in your everyday scenarios. You can suddenly be like, oh yeah, I'm not 40 feet under the water, uh, 40 meters under the water. I'm actually fine. So why am I spending so much time on this negative thought? Or why am I spending so much time in just this scattered state of not knowing who I am and not caring about being present, being awake, being aware of my own attention? Attain to your greatness. Remember who you are. Remember what you're capable of. You're capable of so much more than you realize. Just knowing that your well-being will skyrocket compared to where it is today. You create your own reality.